Okay. Yes, I have opened this up again. I've decided this is going to become a very frequent thing of me to do. They just keep adding things that I love to talk about for hours. And a simulator as comprehensive and well-made as this definitely deserves as good of a spotlight as I can give it. I have many things to show you today, including a surprise. Now, where on this screen can you spot the surprise? <laughs> oh my god, Musk, you fucking legend. <laughs> this is a Tesla Roadster. You've probably already heard that Elon Musk, good old musky boy, put his own goddamn car in space. Now granted, it's not just the car. This car is actually attached to one of the rocket stages and it's floating in space. So it's right there now, uh, quite far away from Earth. And it is due to enter Mars's orbit, not orbit around Mars, but Mars's orbit. Uh, within the next few months, I'd say. And then it'll circle back around and just keep going. Uh, <laughs> This is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen, and I love it. Um, I love how Musk thought this was a brilliant idea to test out the uh, payload capabilities of his new Falcon Heavy rocket that his team has developed, which is quite impressive. It can lift close to 64 metric tons of cargo into space. That's enormous. That's a US main battle tank in space. That's, that's a big ask of a rocket to do. And not only that, but they land it too. Which is just bloody incredible. <laughs> and yeah, so anyway, they finished designing that, and to test it out, they uh, gave it a dummy payload, which included Musk's own car. As of 2.58pm, on the 17th of April 2018, this is exactly where it is in space. About, uh... E memes. Yay far away from Earth. A few million Ks. Give or take. So yeah, uh, stay tuned for this one, I suppose. They're going to add to this model. Hopefully we'll see the, the little spaceman hanging out of the roof as well. <laughs> we'll come back to this later. Oh, not before discussing something that's been on my mind. How much pressure is in those tires? Because normally tires that size, probably about 35 PSI, but that's on Earth where the ambient pressure is 14 PSI. There is no PSI outside right now. So, would they have lowered the pressure in the tires to suit so it doesn't bulge horribly? You wouldn't need much to keep them inflated out there. I don't know. Maybe I'll look it up myself and, uh, maybe I'll learn something. But anyway, there's more to show than just a car. I mean, come on. We see millions of these every day, even Teslas. A supernova caused by accreting too much mass. Ooh. <laughs> That's beautiful. They've changed the way that supernovas happen in this simulator, and it looks rather beautiful. And I can go straight into this cloud of extremely hot plasma and swim around, and I'm still getting a solid 70 frames per second. How good is that? So this is a rather destructively beautiful environment. But, uh, it's not just pretty, it's necessary for the survival of our universe. Now that there's all this stuff, these clouds, these insanely massive clouds of particles, this is still going. It's only been a couple of minutes. And, uh, hang on a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're already reaching the million kilometer scale. And it'll just continue expanding. And continue expanding. So, okay, we're getting into AUs now, brilliant. But anyway, from this cloud, from this nebula, new stars will merge and form. In fact, I think it's already happening in the center there. Because mass will eventually start collecting into balls of stuff. And then when that gets big enough, it's going to start 
the hydrogen fusion process and more stars will be formed through that. By God, this is going to turn into a gigantic cloud. Okay, we're starting to measure in light years. I'm kind of nervous. Uh, oh my God, that's <laughs> one star. I mean, Sirius B is pretty big and has a fair bit of mass, but a cloud being over a light year across in just eight years is enormous. 29,000 kilometers a second. One tenth the speed of light. All of this stuff is traveling. It's so cool! We've done this before, but let's see how it looks in the arm of our galaxy. You see, that is enormous. Uh, yep. <laughs> oh god, the stutters. But if a cloud that big can be seen this far away, in a galaxy this size, then uh, that's, that's, that's a lot of energy being released right here. That's quite scary, actually. Makes me wonder if a, a star close enough to us, if it exploded. I... Okay, so eventually... Oh, there's a remnant! <gasps> Hello! So you did not collapse into a black hole, you just released all of your energy and became rather small. Okay. Nope, that's cool. Oh, that's another thing I need to talk about later is, uh... One of two things happens after a supernova. Neutron star or black hole. And, uh, I've talked about neutron stars before, but I want to talk about it again because I've found out a lot more about them. Okay. Here I have placed a white dwarf carbon star. Changed a few things, I've made it very small but very dense. It weighs a thousand Jupiters, or almost one sun, but its radius is only about 20k. So, let's change a couple other things. Okay, if it's that dense, it's going to be quite hot. 20,000 degrees sounds fair. Yeah, that's, that's nice. Whoa, that's really, really nice. Ooh. Magnetic field. Uh, it's going to be actually, wait, I'll change the motion first. Rotational period. Well, if I'm trying to make it into a pulsar, it needs to spin enormously quickly. Once every 0.2 of a second. So we'll go one second per second. Now look at that. Spinning five times a second. Now... Magnetic field will go one million Teslas. There we go! Look at that! Ladies and gentlemen, I just made a pulsar star all on my own. Yes, you may bow to me and call me God. Now I can actually... Oh, rip V-Sync. Okay, I hope that's not too bad for recording purposes. <laughs> Look at that. Now, these mysterious, extremely terrifying objects actually exist in space. Yes, I just made one by conjuring up very unlikely scenarios, but that's space for you. <laughs> like I mentioned before, there's one of two ways a supernova can go. It can crush into a neutron star when a star's leftover mass is crushed under its own gravity to the point where there are only very tightly packed neutrons inside the star. And because of centrifugal physics, they tend to spin very quickly. So if the star, let's say, let's say it was 500,000 Ks that was its radius. So a million k's across. If it spun once every few hours, imagine taking that momentum and shrinking it down to 40 k's across, like what I've got here. Now taking centrifugal physics into account, it's going to spin very, very quickly. <laughs> now with that kind of mathematical equation, you know, um, a million k's across to 40 k's across. I don't know exactly how fast it would go, so I guessed at roughly six times a second. And because it spins so hard and so fast, it has an immensely strong magnetic field. So strong, in fact, and it's spinning so hard that it's constantly throwing mass and throwing all different kinds of energy in, in these beams, almost like a wet tennis ball in slow motion. And the ones that we can see from Earth 
are because the beams are pointed at us. And if we zoom in on them, they actually look like that. They look like flashing little lighthouses that are spinning at such a constant rate that they rival atomic clocks. And I know I've talked about these before. I've probably crapped on about how they're formed and what they are. But what I recently found is that they make noise. Not so much an audible sound, but they give off a lot of electromagnetic radiation, which is the exact thing you need for speakers to work. You need an electromagnetic current in order for microphones to work and for speakers to work. So you can convert each time a pulse is sent towards Earth into a blip of sound. After scouring the internebs for a long time, I found some recorded pulsar sounds for us to listen to today. And I'm going to adjust my model pulsar here to suit. This is a pretty normal, slow pulsar. Still quick for a star, but it's a slow one. PSR B0329 plus 54. Spinning once every 0.7 seconds. Now I've sped it up to match the Vela or Vela pulsar, which spins once every 89 milliseconds. This one, the Crab pulsar, is the result of a supernova that was witnessed by people in the year 1054 AD, and it spins once every 33 milliseconds. PSR J0437-4715 <gasps> is a very quick one. So quick they've dubbed it the millisecond pulsar because it takes only three milliseconds to rotate once. Now it doesn't look any faster than crab pulsar. That's because it's 60 frames per second. There's only so many frames to go around and display each flash of light. But this is what it sounds like. One hundred seventy-four times a second. And one of the fastest I've ever heard of, PSR B1937 plus 21. At the time of where I'm getting these sounds from, it was the fastest known pulsar ever found, with a rotational period of, let's see, 642 times a second, or once every one and a half milliseconds. Now, the simulation's goddamn broken by now because I should just be seeing a constant flash of light, but no, I've sped it up so fast. Now before I play the sound, to put things into perspective, a Formula One car's engine, one of the highest revving things humans have ever created, can reach over 20,000 RPM, spins at about 330 to 350 times a second. This is about double that, and this is what it sounds like. That alone terrifies the absolute shit out of me. The surface of this star is spinning at one seventh the speed of light, but it's still holding together because that's how dense it is. And just to remind you of how dangerous it is, I'm going to put our, st our sun right next to it. You and I are gonna watch what happens. Let's speed it up a little bit. Oh no, oh god. Oh, yep, there, <laughs> there we go. Uh, this thing's magnetic field is so strong that if it were to sit right next to another star, it would actually tear it to pieces. It's like if you go too close to a black hole, you get pulled into its event horizon. This is, I, I suppose, much more spectacular because it just... It's tearing pieces off another star. Like cotton candy and it's eating it. And in fact, this particular pulsar that I've built that matches the fastest one that I just played, it probably accelerated to those speeds using another star, accreting so much mass in a whirlpool fashion that it just kept spinning. Like a water-powered mill. Yeah, it's spooky, you know? 
It's, it's a spooky little blue ball. If I slow it down to less than one second per second... Okay, we're playing at 50 milliseconds per second and, uh... That's still fast. <laughs> God damn, I've crapped on about them for a long time, wow. 